Um, so today, our spiritual practice is a direct, can be stated in a direct quote fra, from uh, our text. Attune, attune with the invisible part of ourselves. Wow, what kind of a instruction is that? Tune in, attune, to attune, become at one with, connect with the invisible part of ourselves. Well, that seems almost impossible to execute. I mean, I can certainly connect with my hand and I can look in the mirror and see my eyes and I'm aware I can touch my forehead. But how do I contact the invisible part of myself? Is there even an invisible part of myself? Well, sure, you, there's my mind. That's not visible to anyone, so I can contact my mind. I can connect with my thoughts. Um, and at the very minimum, that is what Sir John means. But he actually means something more profound, something deeper than that. The invisible part of ourselves uh, is, our, is, to use traditional language in the Western tradition and in English, the soul, psuche, in, in, uh, in other, and other traditions make use of different terminology. Let's, uh, but so this is what he's asking us to attune ourselves uh, uh, to, as he, as he writes. We should attune ourselves to the sacred and holy nature, the sacred and holy nature and loving presence of divinity for daily guidance. Now, if there is a divine reality, it certainly does seem to be invisible. It may express itself through nature, but that requires a certain kind of faith to read that language. Uh, one does not not required to take this approach to life, in which case the divine seems to be invisible. And for many, if it's invisible and it has no effect in the material world, then, of course, it, it's another way of saying it doesn't exist. It's invisible because it doesn't exist. Well, Sir John is asking us to, as all of the spiritual traditions do, is asking us to put that doubt, that suspicion to, to the side for a moment and see if we cannot, in fact, attune or connect with, with our souls, with our spiritual side, with the Atman, with the divine within. Uh, he, gives a, he gives a commonplace uh, illustration of this, which uh, came from his work, Workaday World, I'm sure. Um, he writes that the, the secretary or the, the office manager uh, in my setting has several important messages. Well, these days, of course, you know, we just have busy, busy smartphones. So, uh, and there's lots of things that need to be done. Where do I start? What's the starting point? Well, as he writes, I close the door, settle in my chair, and for a few moments tune out everything except God and me. I build a mental island of peace, quietness uh, around myself by becoming attuned with the presence of God, the divine, in thought, feeling, and action. I immerse myself in God's presence, the divine presence, and all things in that consciousness begin to cooperate for good for myself and for all with whom I come in contact. So, um, and so at this quote, as this quote uh, gives uh, us a, a, a nice picture of, of how spirituality uh, uh, was a part of the very busy everyday life of, of Sir John. But actually, as simple as it may sound, this is really an advanced spiritual practice. Uh, it shows someone with a, an easy familiarity with the divine presence and who was able to access it just about on, on demand. And that takes a lot of practice. That takes a lot of doing. It's not, it's not a, a skill that one can just uh, develop overnight. Now, sometimes people, often most people, studies do show that large percentages of people have spontaneous mystical experiences maybe a fraction of a second in which one suddenly felt, feels as if the veils have been removed. And this becomes a keystone moment in people's lives that they cherish in memory, but they assume they could never have again. Whereas the, the person who's accomplished in spirituality actually knows how to access this state of consciousness really on demand. That's what yoga, as a meditative practice, that's what mindfulness, uh, that's what uh, the practices outlined in other spiritual traditions actually train us to be able to do. So this is actually an this is evidence that Sir John Templeton was uh, actually an advanced meditator and contemplative. 
Um, and so uh, the question then for us might be, how do I go from being a person who may have either no spiritual experiences to speak of or only occasional, random, accidental spiritual experiences to a person who can actually enter into spiritual consciousness at will? That is the task of the yogi. That is the task of the contemplative. And I'd like to suggest a practice for us today that can help us do that. So this is one of those closed eyes sitting under the Bodhi tree type meditations. I'll probably close my eyes as well. I will just speak from my own experience as, as I guide you into this. And I am guided by many great teachers that have influenced me as I set this up for you. In particular, uh, Ramana Maharshi, Sri Ramana Maharshi, one of the great uh, saints of Hinduism of, of the last century. All right, so in the few minutes that we have, perhaps we can find a, a quiet place, uh, a, a quiet corner, uh, a, a place to sit for a few moments. We can uh, uh, make that sacred space by closing the door. And in the fundamental gesture of mysticism, we're going to turn within. Pratyahara in the yoga system, we're going to withdraw our attention from our senses. And we're going to turn, if you will, our senses inward. And we need a focus for that. And so one place is the breath. That's a great place to start. Instead of focusing upon my phone or the, or the view out the window or what someone was saying or my memories, I focus on my breath. Become aware of your breath. Oh, that's already quiets the mind immensely. And when you get drawn away by something else, just come back to your breath. And if you have a hard time staying with your breath, think uh, st staying with it. The breath is actually fairly, uh, um, fairly rich uh, phenomenon. It, sometimes the breath is sharp. Sometimes it's, it's deep. Sometimes it's long. It can be slow. It can be dry. It can be wet. It can be smooth. It can be jagged. There's a lot of quality. There are a lot of qualities there. So just bring your attention to your breath or because I'm talking, you can also bring your attention to the sound of my voice and just come back to that every time you're distracted. Every time you're distracted, come back to the breath or to my voice. And this could be continued for a couple of minutes or as you become more skilled or if you are skilled, and I won't assume that everyone's a beginner, I assume that many of you are also profound contemplatives. We stay with the breath. We could do this for 10 minutes. We could do it for 20 minutes or even longer. Just stay with your breath. Come back to your breath. And you'll find the quietness begins to emerge. This is the cleaning process. We're cleaning all the smudges out right now. Come back to your breath. Now, if, if you need a more, uh, a richer, a more, more suggestive image, you can, you can choose many other objects, a divine figure, or we can stay more secular, if you will, and just visualize our heart. Bring your awareness to the center of your chest. And you can imagine that at the center of your chest, there is a, a golden knot of gently throbbing and pulsing energy. Bring your attention to the center of your chest. You can, we can leave the breath behind now and become aware of this kind of gentle golden circle of energy at the center of your being. And just remain with that. Transfer gently your attention from the breath to the heart. And whenever your attention wanders away, come back to the heart. 
And we'll finish our segment today by resting in the radiant stillness of the heart.